Anyone who's heard the news of neutrinos being measured going faster than the speed of light might find it hard to imagine what really went on in Switzerland and Italy. As simplistic as this may seem, the Oprah experiment, which is what it's called, has some similarities with what you just saw. The principle of measuring time and distance at start and finish stays the same. There's just a lot more going on. It might be hard to imagine what a neutrino looks like. A neutrino's mass is at least a million times smaller than that of the next known lightest particle. For simplistic reasons, they are probably best seen as extremely tiny balls. Let's move on to the Oprah experiment. The so-called superproton synchrotron, which is located in Geneva, Switzerland, is used to accelerate bursts of protons and produce neutrinos in the process. It consists of a linear and circular accelerator. The linear accelerator accelerates the protons and sends them into the circular part, which is 6.9 kilometers long. This accelerator uses magnetic fields to steer the proton beam through the accelerator. Electric fields are used to accelerate the proton beam. After the protons have been accelerated enough, they are magnetically kicked from the circular part and are slammed into a graphite target, which is 2 meters long. From this proton crash, mesons are created, which are immediately focused by passing through magnetic horns and helium bags. The mesons are sent into a 995 meter long vacuum tunnel, where they transform into neutrinos. Right after this tunnel, two detectors are positioned that measure neutrinos passing through. This is timed as the starting point for the time and distance measurements of the neutrinos. From this point on, the neutrinos start their 730 km journey, traveling right through the Alps towards the Oprah particle detector in the Gran Sasso National Laboratory in Italy. The neutrinos arrive at the Oprah detector, which consists of two target tracker sections that can track the neutrinos passing through. This is timed as the end point for the time and distance measurements. Precise timing and distance measurements were essential for this experiment. CERN and the Grand Sasso National Laboratory use very precise identical GPS antennas in combination with very precise atomic clocks that have been synchronized by Swiss and German metrology institutes, reducing timing difference to about 3 nanoseconds. The inaccuracy of distance was brought as low as 20 centimeters across the total 730 kilometer distance using GPS, external landmarks, and a global geodesy reference frame. 16,111 neutrinos were accurately measured and timed from 2009 to 2011, as described, arriving approximately 2.4 milliseconds after their departure. Light would need 60.3 nanoseconds more to travel the same distance. The overall inaccuracy of these measurements was determined to be 10 nanoseconds at max. The following are the speed measurements for the neutrinos on average and the speed determined for light. The 7,389 meters per second difference is a big deal if the littleness of inaccuracy is to be believed. The OPRA experiment calls for repetition by other physicists across the globe or the discovery of overseen errors. If anything, it makes us question a generally accepted law of physics that was used to base many more laws of physics on. Currently, some overseen flaws have been suggested that could clarify the faster-than-light neutrinos. Unfortunately, the production time available for this video was too short to cover this side of the story.